Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our gathering here at Evangel Community Church. We are so glad that you guys are with us to worship this morning. We want to welcome all the freshmen and first-year students and your families that are here with us. We hope that this is a great place for you to make connections and find community and a place that you can plug in and find your church home here with us. So we're excited that you're here with us today. We're going to kick things off this morning out of a passage from Psalm chapter 96, verses 7 through 10, and those will be on the screen behind me. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, and bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth, and say among the nations, the Lord reigns. And that's why we're here gathered together to celebrate God and his glorious reign and the gift of his son Jesus Christ. So as we open up this morning, would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Father God, we come before you and we thank you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, that you are great among all nations, Lord. And we thank you that you've given us the gift of your son Jesus. And it's through his bloodshed on the cross that we are made right with you and the payment for sin has been made for us on our behalf. God, we just pray that as we open up your word together today, as we uh, come in unity to worship before the throne, God, that our praises would be honoring and glorifying to you. God, we just ask that you would put us in a space to worship you this morning, to hear from you. Uh, God, just help us to calm our minds and our hearts, especially maybe the anxieties that are, are in hearts this morning as uh, new folks are moving to town and it's a new place for the first time and they're out on their own. And God, we just ask that you would bless them and that you would lead them closer and closer into relationship with you, that you would help them find community here at Evangel and uh, just walk with you throughout their their next seasons of life here at Michigan Tech. God, we thank you for your goodness, and we thank you so, so much for the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his awesome and mighty name that we pray. Amen. Hey, if you guys are able, would you please stand as we open and worship together this morning? In the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. I believe that the power of the gospel still makes a broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. No matter where I go, no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. I believe that the walls start falling when we fall down on our knees i believe that the lame go walking and the blind are gonna see i believe that the gates of hell will tremble when the words begin to sing i believe i believe i believe yeah as i bow before you Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the darkness that the light has come. Sing it to the nations. Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the daughters. Sing it to the sons. To every generation. Look at what the Lord has done. Sing it to the darkness. 
Thank you, worship team. Well, hey, Evangel. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. My name is John, and I'm one of the pastors here. I want to welcome you, especially if you're new, if this is your first time. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. And we have a, a really quick, easy way that you can kind of start the connection with us if this is your first time, or maybe you've been here a few times but haven't taken this step yet. I'd like to encourage you to text the word NEW to 906-287-4300, and that will help us know who you are, know that you're here with us, and it'll also start the conversation to get you connected here at Evangel to know more about some of the things we have going on and what we're about. So if you could take a moment to do that, even as I'm doing announcements, that would be really helpful for us, and we believe helpful for you as well. Uh, well, as Travis said, we're so glad to have uh, new students coming into town, so if you are uh, new or returning, we're glad that you're with us today. I'm going to give you a welcome as well. And we've got a few things for our college students here that we want to just make sure you know about as we start kicking things off here in the fall. Uh, first, we have a worship night that is happening on campus at Michigan Tech tonight, so make sure you look for that. It's going to be a great time to kind of kick things off in the school year with prayer and worship to our great God. We've also got a bus that runs for both services that can bring you here and bring you back to campus every Sunday. So uh, for the 9.30 service, the first service, the bus picks up at 9.05 and 9.20. And then for the 11 a.m. service, that picks up at 10.35 and 10.50. And the bus picks up over by the main lobby of WADS. So uh, we, if, you, that, if, if that's helpful for you, make sure you take advantage of that. We're happy to be able to provide that. We've also got uh, something here called Fuse, which is our college group that meets on Thursday nights. They're going to be starting on September 1st. And that first uh, gathering of Fuse is actually going to be on campus as well. So look for more info about that uh, in the future. And then um, starting next Sunday, they're going to be kicking off the college life groups. So these life groups are an opportunity to gather together with other college students to discuss the message that you just heard. So those run after both services um, and up in our loft, which we, if you don't know where that is, we'll make sure you know how to find it next Sunday. Um, they're going to be kicking things off with a pizza party for after both services. So again, after the 9.30, after the 11 o'clock service, next Sunday they will have a pizza party and an opportunity for you to get an idea of what those life groups look like. We've also got a prayer team here at Evangel called the Prayer Squad. We'd love to pray with you if there's any requests or praises that you are uh, celebrating in your life. You can text the word prayer to that same number, 906-287-4300. We believe here at Evangel that giving is an important part of our worship to God. It's also a way that we show God that we trust him and recognize him as the provider of all things. So if you'd like to take part in giving, um, we believe that Scripture says that we're supposed to do that with a joyful heart. So we don't want you to give because you feel pressured or forced or anything like that. But if you'd like to take part in that, 
There's a few ways you can do it. We have online giving options. Um, you can uh, go to evangelup.org slash give. Or if you notice on the seats in front of you, there's some QR codes there. Um, the first one is for our worship service. It has notes for the message, other information about this week. And then there's also a QR code for giving. So you could scan that. It'll take you to that right to that web page. And then there's also a QR code there to get involved with serving here. So uh, you can also text ECH Give to 77977. It'll send the instructions right to your phone on how to give. Or if you'd like to give a physical gift, we've got boxes in the back of the room, and you can mail in checks to our location here. We're excited this morning because we're starting a brand new series called This Means War. This is a doctrinal study of our battle with truth. And we're excited about this new series uh, just in general, but also because uh, Pastor Levi, who's our lead pastor, is returning. This is his first Sunday back from his sabbatical. So we're excited to welcome him back and to hear him preach God's word this morning. He's going to be talking about the reality that we are at war with truth in our lives. So hopefully that gives you just a, a little bit of curiosity about where he's going this morning because it's a really important message. Um, this Sunday, a quick note, after this service, we are having our evangel class. We're actually going to be meeting over in the adult elective classroom, which is over by the bathrooms. So if you've signed up for that and you plan to join us, just make a note that we're going to be back there in that classroom near the bathrooms today after this service. We also have a light group meeting, leader meeting coming up next Sunday. It'll be after the second service. Uh, we're going to have lunch. We're going to talk about uh, our vision for life groups, why we do life groups the way that we do, uh, the importance of them, and we're going to do a little bit of training. So if you're a life group leader or you're interested in being a life group leader and learning more about that, you can join us for that. Uh, you can sign up over at the Welcome Center to let us know that you'll be there so we can have enough food. And then we're, we're getting into some fall events here, which is a lot of fun. We have a free kids carnival coming up on Saturday, September 10th, here at the church building from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is going to be a great opportunity to invite your friends and neighbors and coworkers to come and bring their kids for a great time. We're going to have some inflatables here in addition to the playground equipment that we already have. Uh, we'll also have lots of treats and games and prizes for everybody. So this is going to be a ton of fun. Make sure you mark your calendar now and start inviting people to join you on September 10th. We also have our family reunion lunch coming up the day after that, so Sunday, September 11th, and this will be after second service. Everybody is invited, and this is kind of our opportunity as our college students come back into town and as a lot of us who, you know, were in and out from vacation and things like that this summer to come back and celebrate God's goodness and see each other, spend time in fellowship and enjoy a meal. We're going to have pasties from Roy's. If you haven't had that before, that is definitely something to to look forward to. So Sunday, September 11th, that's taking place. And then uh, our middle schoolers and high schoolers are not meeting tonight because they actually were out on an awesome trip yesterday. That's actually a picture from the trip. They had a blast. They were whitewater rafting. And I was a little bit disappointed to hear that nobody fell in because that just adds some excitement to things. But they all stayed in their raft. I don't know. So they had a great time, but they're not going to be meeting tonight. They'll be back together next week. Um, and so we're going to continue worshiping now. If you're able, would you stand and join us?
distant and removed. But you chased us down in merciful pursuit. To the sinner you were grace, and the broken you did grace. blood and tears how can it be there's a God who weeps there's a God who leads oh praise the one who would reach for me hallelujah to the son of suffering your cross my freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your love still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever, your cross, my freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your love still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever. Oh 
for Jesus there's nothing impossible for me. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. I'm back. How are you guys? It is so good to be back and hanging out with you guys. I've been on sabbatical for the last 12 weeks and just so thankful to the church and to the leadership to see the wisdom in that. Thankful to these guys over here who carried the load. Yeah, let me just give them a hand. This is my favorite time of uh, the week where we get to open the word of God together, that we get to go as a community and allow the spirit of the living God to move in our hearts. And, and remember, we always say this, that the sermon is never the point. It's just the push toward transformation. And we hope and pray for that today. We've been praying for you guys all week and praying for our, our own hearts all week. And so if you would, would you bow your heads 
and pray with me. Father, we come before you. We're so thankful that we can gather in this place and that we can raise the name of your son up. And we ask that we would do that well. We ask that your spirit would be free to move in our hearts and our lives, that our minds would just be focused on your word for just this moment. And God, that you would transform us that you would move us a little bit closer into the reality that you want for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, our new series is called This Means War. And one of the things that I think that we get uh, caught up in sometimes is that life is kind of mundane. Things come, things go. Um, you know, for some of you, it's kind of a big deal right now. You're going to college for the first time. You're leaving mom and dad, and you came to church today, and we're so glad that you did. And hopefully, this isn't the only time that we see you, um, because we know that mom and dad are going to be gone. But there's going to be a war that says, hey, um, should I go to church? Do I really need to gather? Well, the Bible says this, don't forsake the gathering. Don't forsake that. Don't stop going to church. And so I want to encourage you with that. But there's a war all the time going on inside of us. There's a war that rages against our hearts, that rages against who we are, that wants us to move away from the things of God and toward the things of our own reality. The war that's inside is this constant battle between the reality of God's world that he has shown us through his word and the perceived world that we've created. In this series, we're going to be looking at everyday war that's going on in our life. We're going to be looking at doctrines and why are these doctrines important and what do they do for us? It's not to have head knowledge of God. It's for transformation. It's for how to live. When you are in the battle and you don't know you're in the battle, you're going to lose the battle. And so today we want to just kind of unpack that. Number one, you're in the battle. There's this reality that you can't see that's going on every day in your life. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11, it says this, but you, man of God, flee from all of this, flee from this battle, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. And then it goes on in there, in, in, in verse 12, and, and it, it says this, it says, fight the good fight of faith. And we are in a fight every day of our life. Do we believe God? Do we believe what his word says? Do we believe that the reality that he says in his word is true? And this battle goes on all the time. It's those moments in our lives where our boss, we know our boss is kind of an idiot, and we go, do I really have to follow him? Well, that's a battle of reality. That's a battle of what God says. Read Romans chapter 13, and the answer is, yeah, you do. It's those moments with our spouse when you, you're just angry and you know that you're going to respond with anger and you know the Bible says don't do it, but you're like, hey, my feelings, they're never going to know what my, I'm feeling inside. There's this battle going on every day in our lives. It's these moments in our lives where, um, where, where we are trying to figure out what is true and what is not. And we have all of these sayings that kind of make us feel better, like to, hum to be human is to err. And, and um, you know, this idea that God is, is, is there and, and we're to love other Christians and, and we have these things, but it's really hard to love other Christians sometimes because sometimes uh, other Christians, we don't even like them, right? And they're, they're bugging us and they're bothering us. And God says, you know, man, you got to love them and you got to care about them. It's when the guy who cut you off off in the road and he becomes your enemy just like that right in that split second when he cuts you off and the bible says to pray for him and to love your enemy because he's your enemy at that moment right and, and, and these are the moments and it's in in these small moments that there's these battles going on inside of us and we sometimes miss this during our day we may not phrase it like that, we may not think like that, but there is a war going on with truth. Our hearts what, want what they want. And we want to decide, um, we make decisions sometimes about the feelings of our heart instead of whether God is telling us the truth and living in the truth of that every day from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed that you have these little battles. They're always a battle of faith. I've never gone to war before, 
And so I mean no disrespect by the story I'm about to tell you. And if you've gone, you're in the armed forces and you've gone to war, or even if you haven't, you protected this country. I just want to thank you this morning. Thank you for doing that. We're, we're just appreciative of the sacrifice that you made in that. But my tour of duty happened in 1992. It was the dog days of summer. Birdman, Wirt, the Koskala brothers, Choppers, Patrick, and a bunch of others were going to war that day. We stopped by the Koskala brothers' gun shop, and we got some ammunition, and we went out to this big old field. We loaded up our paintball guns, and it was time for war. The war started, and we lost a few good men right away. And we were now in this ditch, this kind of old riverbed, and we were taking heavy fire. And they were coming. There was more of them than, than, than us. And we were taking heavy fire. And Miller and Birdman and I were in there, and we were returning fire back at them and, and trying to keep them at bay. We knew it wasn't going to last very long. They were coming for us, and we could see them trying to flank us. They were going around, and they were going to come in from the back, and then we were done. We were going to get shot. And so we made this plan that we would run to this abandoned house over to our right, and so we were going to do it on the count of three. We'd all stand up, take a shot, and run. We did this, and Miller took one right in the neck. We left him. We left the man on the ground. He was squealing, and we kept running. Birdman and I did. We made it to the house, still taking heavy fire. There's old windows, that these really thin windows, and they're breaking off as the paintballs hit, but we were safe, and we decided to go up into the, the upstairs, and we knew they were coming for us, but we had a little bit. We were shooting out the windows at them trying to keep them at bay, and we came up with a plan. As we went up the stairs, there is this big open room, the master bedroom, if you will, and right in the hallway, there was an opening to the attic. Birdman said, I'm going to get up there. He was smaller than I, and, and so I hoisted him up there, and what we were going to do is I was going to play decoy and take a couple shots, but when they came around the corner, the, the stairs went like this. There was a corner to them that we would shoot them, or he would shoot them, and, and I was just the decoy. Well, there was fear in our hearts. There's sweat coming down, and, and we're nervous as the door opens, and we hear them. They're now in the house, and they're coming for us, and they're creeping up the stairs, and it's getting close, and I'm, I'm readying myself, and all of a sudden, Birdman jumps out of the attic, the plan is done at that point. We're now stuck in a big open room, and they're coming up the stairs. What happened was this. A mouse had run over Birdman's leg, and he was scared. <laughs> so now we're stuck. And paintball, if you've ever paintballed before, you know these things sting. And this was 1992. There's no protective gear. We had, we had like safety goggles on because our parents told us and, and, and like t-shirts. And if it hit you, it welted you. It looked like a bullet hole going inside of you. And, and so we're nervous. We're scared. Sweat starting to go. And I see that these windows, you know, they've probably been painted. This is like a hundred and something year old house. I'm like, I don't know if it's going to open. And I open it and I say, Birdman, open that one. Well, I jump out, there's a, there's a porch roof, and I jump out onto that. And I think he's going to go to this side, open the window, and then we can have crossfire. Good idea, right? Well, Birdman doesn't get the memo on this, and he's right behind me. Now we're stuck on a roof. <laughs> and they're up the stairs. And they're now into the room. And we have one window open where we can go pshh, pshh, and shoot at them. Well, they are starting to overtake us at this point. And I look down, and I see it's not that far. So I jump. Birdman follows. Well, the grass was like this high. <laughs> my knee hits my eye, like right below it, and puffs up like a, a prize fighter. And they shoot me right in the back at the same time. Birdman scampers off and they chase him through the woods and they, they chase him like almost like a deer run through the woods and he gets shot right in the head. It looked like a bullet hole. It started bleeding in his head. And I tell you that story because of this. Oftentimes, truth is like this. 
it, it creeps up the stairs, it comes around the corner, and we go, man, it's going to hurt when we get shot with truth. It's painful. And so what we do is we jump. We run away from it. And I will tell you this, if you run away from truth, it's always worse than taking the bullet of truth. It's always worse. Truth is sometimes painful, and it's sometimes hard. You know, if I, if I do give God the 10% that he talks about, well, I have enough with the 90% he gave to me. He says I will, but will I trust him? If I don't respond with anger, my spouse will never know how I really feel. If I don't live with my significant other, how am I ever going to know if we're going to work in marriage? These are all things that go through. And the truth of God's word says, no, if you do, I'll provide. It says, hey, don't respond with anger. Be gentle. Hey, keep the marriage bed clear, clean pure. See, truth comes and it confronts. It always confronts. And sometimes it's painful, but it's always less painful than the alternative. Because truth brings us to a place of peace. It brings us to, to the way we're supposed to live and have been created to live. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11 says, dear friends, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from sinful desires. And look what it says. Which wage war against your soul. There's a war going on, folks. The scriptures tell us this. When we place our faith in the truth of the doctrines of scripture, war against our soul moves to places of peace. The war against our soul is a charge. Um, it's this, this thing that we, we have to charge against. This truth comes in and we have to accept it. And sometimes it's painful. It always comforts in the end. But it's sometimes painful when it confronts us. <laughs> but the question is, is God telling me the truth? That's the very question in Genesis when Adam and Eve, is God telling me the truth? Is God telling me the truth? When you know the truth, you have decisions. The scriptures tell us if you know to do right, real simple, what do we do? Do it. That's what it says. If you know to do right, do it. Because it brings peace to your soul. There's a passage of scripture that tells us really how scripture works. It tells us how, how it, it, it's designed to war against this battle that's going on. In our lives, it's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's a very famous passage of scripture, and you may know it by heart. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture is God-breathed. You got you to get this first part. If you hold to that the God, the creator of the world, spoke this into existence, this is what the scriptures tell us. He said, let there be light, and there was light. It's by his very word that he created all of this. He created you and I. He created all of the trees, the animals, all of the stuff. It was by his word. And it didn't, it wasn't like he was like, you know, saying a bunch of words. He just said it and it happened. No, it, all of his power, all of his beauty, all of his splendor, all of his brilliance, all of the DNA that was in you was there in that moment at creation to create you. That's what our God did. And then he says, this is what this passage says. This is God breathed. This is God spoken. This is God given to us. This right here, the scriptures, the same thing that created the, the very world in which we live, God has revealed to us through his word how it works and how we are to respond. 
And he says, man, it's profitable for teaching. It's profitable for us understanding the truth. This passage is important for the understanding of how truth and doctrines work. How scriptures are meant to function in our life. And he gives these these four ways in this passage that it works. And we want to unpack those for the rest of the time that we have. He says that it's profitable for teaching. Why is it profitable for teaching? It's this. You and I don't see reality clearly. You don't see reality clearly. You see it through your heart. I see it through my heart. And the heart wants what the heart wants. And we see it, and it's tainted. It's tainted by our desires. It's tainted by us trying to be on the throne instead of the one whose throne it is, and that's God. It's tainted by our sin and the scar of sin. It's tainted by your parents' sin. It's tainted by their parents' sin. It's tainted, and we see the world, and we do not see reality The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The scriptures tell us the truth, and it tells us about our reality. It tells us how we were meant to live. It's an incredible, incredible gift. It's a gift to us. The very word of God spoken to us. We were in Washington, D.C. This was part of my sabbatical as we took a trip out east. And we got to see some museums, and we went to some Smithsonian's, and we, we, we cruised around, and it was, it was a wonderful time. But my family will tell you that the greatest thing that we did is we didn't go to a, a, a Smithsonian. They liked some of those things. But we went to the Bible Museum, and you're like, oh, pastor guy goes to the Bible Museum, of course. No, 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 we stayed the whole day, and my kids loved it. I have a picture, I think of one of them, it, it, and this is all like interactive, In the, it, it's five floors, and, and he's in this. Another thing that we did was that we went to a virtual reality. Um, you put these goggles on, and you went to the Holy Land, and you got to go to 25 different sites. It was amazing. You got to see all of these sites of, uh, of like the Sea of Galilee, and you're like, whoa, and it looked like you were there, and you're on this little stool, so you could turn your head, and you could go this way, and it was amazing. It also made me a little sick, if I'm honest, because virtual reality goggles can kind of do that, but what it really did in all of this, you went to, you were on the top of, uh, of like these monuments, you saw where the, the Garden of Gethsemane were, it was awesome. But what it did in all of us ago, man, I want to see that for real. I want to see that for real. That's what the scripture does. It's like virtual reality goggles. You're seeing the world one way. You're not seeing it clearly. And all of a sudden you start to read it and you start to apply it to your life and you go, oh, I want to live like that. I want that in my life. I want the truth of what God says in my life. It's like the, the, the Bible or these virtual reality goggles to help us to understand how to live and how to see and how to be and how to, it's not this thing of like, God is like, I'm the big teacher guy, and I am going to punish you and smite you. And I think that's how I thought about it as a kid. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when I was uh, uh, in school, you couldn't chew gum in class. But I loved bubble gum. There was this gum called slush puppy gum. You guys remember this stuff? Anybody old enough to remember? It was awesome. It tasted like an icy. And and so you'd pop one of these things in, and you put it up in your cheek, and you'd hope to not get caught. My name was on the board often. And you'd have to put your name. And I also was uh, a fan of whispering to my friends, if you can believe that. And sometimes I would get a check, and a check mark meant what? Detention. I once got a detention during Christmas break. That's how impressive my detention work was. And oftentimes I think that's how we think of God. We think of him in this way that is like... He's like this rule holder. And if we don't meet the standard, then the great smiter is going to smite us. 
And and, and that's not. Yes, he disciplines those he loves. I know that passage too. But I I think he's going, man, I want you to see reality. I want you to see how this world works. I want you to see it for all its goodness. And, and, And it teaches us that when we read it and when we digest it and when we're in it. The doctrines of the word of God provide the standards that are lovingly revealed to us by the one who spoke this all into existence. And you cannot see reality without this. You cannot. You will not. He says the Bible is profitable for teaching us. He goes on and he, he says it's good for reproof. I never have used that word in a sentence. I don't know about you guys. Maybe you do. Um, I don't use that word often. Uh, But it really just means rebuke. It's a comparison of what you see. um, How you see. It's reality check. It shows us that, that our lives, when we live outside of this, are lacking. I walked into my house and I, our house kind of has, there's like a living room right here. You walk through a little hallway and you get over here and you're into the kitchen. But the kitchen can see into the living room, family room area. And I, I glanced over and my kids, I thought, were watching a baseball game. And, and so I was doing something in the kitchen and I hear, why don't you throw one down the middle so I can hit it out of here? And I realized they weren't, they weren't watching a baseball game. They were playing a video game. And and it was so clear. It looked real, but it wasn't real. When we live our lives, it often looks like it's reality. And God's there to to help us compare. Is this really real? What we're feeling, what we're sensing, what we're seeing in front of us. That's what this is for. It's to, to rebuke us, to compare, to see in the mirror what God actually has for us. I think oftentimes we are settling for a video game of life instead of the reality of playing the game that God has called us to. As we walk through doctrine, it starts to help us to see if we're worshiping the God of the Bible or the God that we've made up in our heads. If you're reading the scripture, it it, it helps us to have eyes to go, are my thoughts really the thoughts that should be there? Are my desires really the desires that, that I was created to have? Are my words the words that are, are supposed to be coming out of my mouth? Are my choices in line with reality? Are my motivations, are my relationships, is my worship and hope in the right things? If you are reading the scripture and if it's not doing something in the area of your life to challenge your view of reality, your view of God and self, you're probably not handling the scriptures correctly. See, truth always confronts. It also comforts, but it always confronts. Doctrine reproves us by helping us to self-evaluate our lives and our view of God, the God of reality. It helps us to see reality clearly. It helps us to understand the war that's going on in our everyday lives. The next thing that Paul says is the doctrine corrects our reality. It corrects our reality. And I talked about my time in grade school and and, and chewing gum in class and those things. And I think we still think like that. That's how God's correcting. Um, I think sometimes that happens where he gives us a little spanking. Because we need it, because we're not going to change. But I don't think that is what God was doing or how he reveals himself when he's correcting us. I think it's much different than that. Part of my sabbatical is I took a solo when I, in Gitchigumi Bible Camp, wanted to shout out to them and thank them for their generosity toward me. And they gave me a cabin on the lake. And I got to stay there for days and just be alone 
with God and, and, and spend just time in the scripture, and it was awesome. I have a picture of, uh, of a sunset from my deck. Not bad, huh? Not bad. And one of the things that I was just reminded of is that this is just God's world. In that moment of sitting there, I'm like, I got to take a picture. And this doesn't do justice. Our, our projectors are not that great. This thing was amazing. And I thought, man, God does this and it's no effort to him. God does this and he's just amazing. This is a gift. But then I said, you know what? I'm going to take a ride one day up to Copper Harbor. I'm in Eagle River, which is really cool, but there's not very much there. Uh, there's the Jam Pot, where I did go and get some delicious treats. Uh, there's the Fitzgerald, where I went and I got some delicious treats there also. But I want to take a, a ride up the coast, and you can drive ride the coast all the way up. And uh, that's my hog. Um, it's actually a scooter um, with training wheels. And uh, I took this thing up there, and this is a picture from Brockway Mountain. And Brockway Mountain is really cool in the fall. It's really cool anytime, but it's really awesome. You can kind of see all over the place, and you can see a golf course over here, and you can see freighters coming in. It's pretty amazing. But as I drove up there, the road, they don't maintain it. It's not a state road, and it's horrible. If you've been there lately, it is horrific. And, and, and this thing is made for the highway, just driving nicely, cruising along. It's not made for off-roading type things. And this thing was as bad as any off-road that I've ever been on. And I was bouncing around, trying to mo miss things. But I mean, remember, I have lots of tires, and so it's bouncing all over the place. And I get to the top, and I feel like it's pulling me off the road. And so I go underneath, and I look, and there's some sway bars on those training wheels, and one of the pins that keep the wheels stable like this sheared off. And so when you drove it, it, it pulled this tire, went back. It didn't have anything really holding it. And so if this tire goes back, what's it going to do? It's going to make you go this way, right? Off the road. And so I had to drive that back from Hancock, or from Eagle River to Hancock, and... I will tell you, this is how I drove the whole time. And the faster I would go, the more it would pull. And so my shoulder was killing me. I took it to uh, Power Sports in Hancock, and I drove down, and they fixed it for me. I'm very thankful for that. But my shoulder was killing me because it was trying to pull me off the, the road. I think this is what the scriptures do. It, it, it's when it's correcting us it's not like god is just trying to give us rules to give us rules it, he's going man i want to make your life easier i want to make your ride in this world easier i want you to stay on the road and when we are not connected to the truth what it does is it's pulling us off the road that god has for you it pulls you in a different direction. It pulls you away from what he wants. And it's difficult and it's hard. And it's like we're at war. We know that the Bible says that, that Jesus says like, hey, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, come and follow me. And I go, sometimes, Jesus, your teachings aren't easy. You ever been there? I've been there. So what does he mean by that? He means by that, if you will ride with him, if you will go with him, that, that the war that's going on in your heart, you will find peace. You will find the way you're supposed to live. You will find the fullness. Jesus promises this. I have come to give you life to the full. You'll find that fullness. It's amazing. But I don't think it's this spanking thing that we often think of, I think it's corrective, and he puts the pin so we're not going off the road. Correction really closes the gap for us between where we are and where God wants us to be. Remember, God will meet you wherever you are at. You can be um, way away from God you can have a life that you go, man, if I walked into church, lightning bolts are going to hit me in the head. It's not really going to happen, I don't think. Um, I, I, and God will meet you there. 
And he will be so excited that you've come to know him and come to say, hey, you are my father and I, I place my trust in Jesus. And he will meet you right in that place. But he will never leave you there. He'll never leave you way over here. All through the scriptures, it says, you were once this way. Now, this is what, this is reality. This is where you're going. This is the future I have for you. This is what I want for you. And that's what God is always doing through his word. Always doing through the scripture. Always doing through doctrine. Is he's pushing us to correction. He's pushing us to this place where we can have fullness of life. That passage goes on, and it, it says that the doctrines or scriptures are, are there to train us, and they're training us toward a future. They're training us toward the future. It's training us to see clearly. It's training us to see reality. The great hymn, Amazing Grace, says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I, was, I once was lost, but now I'm, I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Everyone is searching for contentment, happiness, peace in this world. But it's found in the faithful practice of the truth of reality that's found in these pages. When we go to scripture, we should ask, what new thing is God calling me to? What is he asking from me? What are my, how are my thoughts doing? What, 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 is he, what are my desires? What are the words that he wants me to see reality through? Embedded in every doctrine of the word of God is a call to a brand new future, a brand new reality. It's embedded in there. It's not, just, it's not just changing our thinking. It's changing our lives. It's being brought into a greater and greater conformity to the will of the one who created and recreated us in Christ. This is the life to, to the fullness that Jesus promised. It doesn't happen and it will not happen without this when we seek the kingdom of God the Bible says that all else will be added all else will be added it's our breath of reality it's our it, it's our plan against the war that's going on inside of us without the scriptures you cannot see reality my friends I, I just want to say this some of you have forgotten that we're at war. You forgot. And I'm afraid you're not seeing reality. Here's why I have this fear. And, and this is in the quiet. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or anything crazy like that. When's the last time you opened this up? When's the last time? That you let the word of God pour over you. I'm not talking about, I, I like the daily devotion things, but if you notice the daily devotion things, they're great for a chair, one chair in the house. They're about perfect timing for one chair in the house, and you can figure out what that chair is. But there's actually a Bible reading plan in, the daily, in those things. I remember reading those things and just kind of getting through it and checking it out the box, but allowing the word of God to flow over you. Allowing the word of God to penetrate your hearts. Man, I'll tell you, during my sabbatical, I got an opportunity to do that. And I will tell you, I had been missing out for so long. Oh, I interact with scripture all the time. It's my job, right? But not like this, where it's just pouring over me. And so what I did is I began to read Romans. And I read it once. I read it twice. I read it three times. I read it four times. I tried to read it. In the early part, I read it every day, the whole book. And just let it pour over me. <laughs> and, and let God just speak to me. And guess what? It was painful at times. I started reading things and started looking stuff in my life. And I'm like, oh, don't. 
It wasn't just an error. It was downright dirty, rotten sin. I had to go, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Change me. Change me. Like, I can't, you can't change on your, by yourself. It's a, it, it's a work of the Spirit. That's a whole other doctrine we'll talk about another time. It's a work of the Spirit in your life. It's like you need uh, 1.21 gigawatts of power. Some of you will get that. And you don't have it. There's no plutonium in 1955. But you need to get back to 1985, to the future that God has for you. That's how we live sometimes. And it's the spirit of the living God moving and transforming us and changing us into this new reality that he has for us. But I'm afraid we don't open this. I'm afraid we've forgotten that we're at war. We have a text number for you. Remember, the sermon is not the point. It's the push. I want to invite you. I want to invite you to come with us on a journey. To come with us and allow the buffet that we've been given. We live in a time where we have the complete revelation of God. We're going to live in a new time. We're going to live in a future time where God is on the throne and we dwell with him. And I'm excited about it. You find that in Revelation. He tells us that. Right? There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And I'm excited about that. But for now, we have the, all we need. God's grace is sufficient for us. We have all we need to understand how to live in this world, to see it for what it really is, to to live how we're supposed to live, to live in reality. I want to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to join me, the staff. We're going to read Romans together, two chapters a day for the next week. And we want you to text us in. Don't be sitting there going, I don't know if I'm going to commit to this. Uh." No, we want to know this. We're going to send you a couple. I'll tell you. We'll send you a couple of encouraging texts during the week. That's it. We're doing this together. We're going to Ming Buffet together of Scripture. Do it with us. Come with us on this journey. And I promise you, it will change you. And we're going to begin to read this together. 906-287-4300. Text reality to it. Because you need to be able to see. We are at war, folks. We're at war. I don't need you to see that. And some of you might right now might be going, ah, I hate reading. Me too. I don't like it always either. I'm not asking you to get up at the crack of dawn and open your Bibles. Do it during your day. So I, I... talked with the staff just a little bit about what God was doing in my life and how important that scripture, like just allowing God to pour over me through scripture was, and and kind of challenged them to do the same thing. And I said, hey, if you're having a rough day or you need some time during your work day, just do it. One of the staff members was going to um, set up some chairs. He put his earbuds in and he began to listen to the scripture. He began to listen to it, and he said, I was just there, and I'm just throwing up chairs, and I'm listening to the scripture. I got through 10 chapters. This is amazing. He did it during his day. You too can do that. Let the scripture pour over you. Let the reality put those goggles on each day. Maybe it's at your lunch hour. Maybe it's at your commute to work. Maybe it's um, for me. This is my time. I will tell you my time. It's a little weird. If you're not from the north, you'll learn to enjoy this. I take a sauna almost every night. In our changing room, in our sauna, I have an Alexa. And I say this, Alexa, Bible app. And the Alexa goes to where I'm reading. And it begins to to read passages of scripture. I love it. I sit in the sauna naked before the Lord, listen to what he has to say for me. It's awesome. And I read Romans, and and then I read it through Genesis, and and I challenged my kids, and my family are doing it. They're all the way through. They read Romans almost all summer, and and you know what? Here's the deal. They didn't understand some of it, and I had to explain to them, and it's okay if you don't understand everything, but allow it to, to, to flow over you. 
And we've had some of the greatest discussions about God. And I was, my wife and I were talking about this, and she said, like, what is the purpose of this? Not just to, to read it. To, and I'm like, we're going to have conversations. We can walk with them. We can talk with them. We can walk over it. I don't know how this is going to transform their lives. That's the Spirit's word. But what I do know is that they should be doing this. They should be doing this. They should be walking in the light of the reality of this. And they're halfway through Genesis. I was in the sauna with Finley last night. And, and he said, <coughs> said to me, Dad, he's in Genesis. He's about halfway through. He says, Dad, when does the Joseph stuff come? That's like in 40s, right? He's a little off of that. But he said, man, I can't wait. That's a great story. But man, that's just pouring over his He's nine years old. It's pouring over his life. I want to challenge you, 906, 287, 4300, 4300, and do it any way you can. You have it on your phone. Uh, Uversion Bible, awesome, download that app. I actually think we have somebody that works at Uversion. Are you here somewhere? There, she's right there. Yay, how are you? Um, good. She works at Uversion, and uh, it is an awesome app. It'll read it to you. You can read it off your screen any way you can. Get it into your life whenever you can. You don't have to get up. If you're a morning person, that's your thing, do that. If you're an evening person, do that. If it's during your day, do that. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream, and I, I do too. My dream is this. It's, the, it's what... what is in the scriptures, and it says this. I have a dream for all of us, myself included. The Lord is our God. The Lord is the only God. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Always remember these commands that I give you today. Be sure to teach them to your children. Talk about these commands when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road. Talk about them when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them on your hands and wear them on your foreheads to help you remember my teachings. Write them on your doorposts of your houses. And on your gates, my dream is that we would be as a community so much connected to the reality of this. We would walk these halls and we would go, man, what's God doing in your life? What is it? What's going on? And we'd be able to answer that question because the word of God has flowed over us. It's, it, we're saturated in it, in your homes, with your kids, with your family, that this would be true and that we would ask that question and you would have an answer. That you would go, man, this is what God's doing. This is what he's doing. Outside of this, you're not going to get that. So 906-287-4300, engage with us. Engage with us. If you don't have a smartphone, we do have an option for you. There is, uh, at the Welcome Center, you can sign up, sign your name on there. We do want to know that you're doing it with us. It's very important to us that we understand, that our people understand the importance of God's word. Let's pray together. Father, we come. Our hands are open to you. God, I don't know what truth that you have for my friends in their lives personally. But I know corporately that we need you. We need your word. We need your spirit. We need you to move in us. We need you to change us. God, it's not, we never get to a place where we, we just retire from this, but you're always moving, you're always changing, and it's always for our good. God, let us see the goodness of who you are. Let us see the goodness of your word. Let us see the power of it, God, as we enter into this together. Let us commit to this, and let us, let us be so filled. God, I pray that you would help myself and my friends to not miss that we're at war and that you want to bring peace, and you bring it through your word. God, please do this for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please rise if you're able and join us for our final song.
flesh out the wonder of life. As you
I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly choose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a hand in different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. What measure could amount to your desire? As we leave today, I just want to, again, one more time, just allow the spirit of the living God to move in your hearts, that you would treasure this. This isn't God, this Bible, but it tells us of the God we serve. And it tells us how to live in the world in which we live. Join us in this reality because the promises of scripture are this. This is what it says in Jude. It says, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. And the church said, 